T minus two minutes. T minus two minutes to launch the Paliak Lunar Fuel Depot atop the Saturn C3X rocket. This is the second demonstration launch of the Saturn C3X, and after the gimbling mishap in the first demonstration, the EDB has had to fund this launch out of its own resources. The payload itself, uh, being little more than a fuel tank with docking ports and token propulsion, comes in at around $20 million, but the Saturn C3X is still over $800 million. It's safe to say that this is a make or break launch for the EDB, and we'll be looking to see if they've resolved the second and third stage instability problems that we saw in the previous mission. T minus 1 minute and 15 seconds, the Paliak Fuel Depot carries monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, which is used by numerous systems, including its own Estes engine and some reaction control systems. It's not, however, used by the Hyperion Shuttle's current booster pack, which requires liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, which cannot be stored for long periods in lunar orbit. The expectation is that some changes will have to be made to the Hyperion Shuttle before it's ready for lunar missions. It can reach the moon, but it would not be able to return. T minus 40 seconds, it's partly cloudy right now at the Cape, very humid, and there's the usual chance of storms tonight. We are still go for launch here. Coming on T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero. And liftoff. We have liftoff of the Saturn C3X bearing the Paliak Fuel Depot to lunar orbit. All systems are nominal. Propulsion is looking good. Stability is looking good. As the rocket pulls away from its launch pad at the Cape. T plus 40 seconds, altitude is 2,345 meters, speed is 140 meters per second. T plus one minute. The rocket is now beyond the sound barrier, past Mach 1. One minute, 25 seconds, altitude 12 kilometers, speed 440 meters per second. The rocket is now going through maximum dynamic pressure and everything looks good with this first stage. The roll that we currently see is planned. There is a planned roll as the rocket reorients to a zero degree roll orientation. T plus two minutes, rocket is now at 36 kilometers, 1,055 meters per second, 19 kilometers downrange. Waiting for first stage cutout. First stage is out. First stage separation is good. And the second stage is lit. The second stage is lit and and pressure is looking good. The Saturn C3X continues on its way to orbit. Checking out stability here as we've passed uh, 2 minutes and 45 seconds, 76 kilometers altitude, 1,600 meters per second, 67 kilometers downrange. 
So far stability does not seem to be much of an issue, but we'll have to wait to see during the region of maximum acceleration close to the end of the burn. 3 minutes and 10 seconds into launch, the rocket is now at 120 kilometers, 1980 meters per second and 153 kilometers downrange. Expecting payload fairing separation any time now. We are above the minimum altitude for payload fairing separation, but it's possible that there are some sensitive instruments on the fuel depot given its long-range communication needs. So we'll have to see when they have... This. Ah, there we go. Uh, payload fairing separation is confirmed. T plus four minutes, T plus four minutes, and we are at 144 kilometers, 2,322 meters per second, and 219 kilometers downrange. And at this point, we may be able to access the payload's onboard camera. And it will be a camera that will be able to give the EDB its first close-up look of the moon once it reaches its destination. So far no word of uh, connectivity to that camera. The main antenna on the payload is being extended. So far all systems nominal, stability looks good. And here we have a simulated view as we try and transfer to the onboard camera of the payload. And yes, this is the payload camera now. Uh, just cut out of that though, unfortunately. Here it is back again. Seem to be having some issues keeping it stable there. Five minutes and 30 seconds into the mission and we are at 209 kilometers, 3,848 meters per second and 515 kilometers downrange. The second stage is expected to continue burning for another 35 seconds to 40 seconds. Right now the fuel depot is an entity without any direct mission attached to it. In other words, uh, the EDV will have to find some sort of use for it. Right now it was simply the only payload that was available to be placed atop this rocket for the second demonstration flight. So really it was a matter of an opportunity and uh, not wasting it by putting uh, a dummy payload upon this rocket for this test but no clear indication of what kind of use the Paliak fuel depot will be put to. And that's second stage out. So the gimbling issues on the second stage seem to have been resolved. Second stage separation. And the third stage is lit third stage is good and perhaps need separation rockets on that second stage though it didn't cause any issues this time third stage burn is stable as we pull away from the from the coast of North America here rocket making its way across the Atlantic. Seven minutes and 40 seconds into the mission and the rocket is now at 290 kilometers in altitude, 5,960 meters per second speed and 1,269 kilometers downrange. Uh, 
uh, now it seems like we've got uh, real control over the onboard camera. That's good. We'll get some better views. Uh, the truss like thing you see in front there is in fact the, the main antenna for the module. The seven RL10 engines doing a magnificent job here in the third stage. in, we are at 318 kilometers in altitude, 6,460 meters per second in speed, and 1,792 kilometers downrange. We are growing ever closer to orbital velocity here, and we will obviously expect the third stage to be shut down. The third stage will have to reserve enough fuel for the lunar transfer. And the payload, the Kaliak Fuel Depot, is right at the limit for this, this launcher in terms of lunar transfers. So it will be a close call on the third stage whether it has enough fuel. If not, of course, the, the Fuel Depot's own engine can push it the rest of the way. It's got something like uh, 6,000 Delta V in its tank. Incidentally, its tank is not full. It has uh, a spare capacity so that when it is refueled, it will have even more fuel than it's carrying up right now. And that's the third stage out. The third stage is out. Uh, however, we're reading... Ah yes, I was about to say we, uh, we're reading that uh, it was short of orbit. And a strange, unusual supplementary burn right there that we saw from the engine. And that brought it into an orbit of 457 kilometers by 217 kilometers. The vehicle is now at 344 kilometers, 7,269 meters per second, and 2,905 kilometers downrange. The estimated delta V remaining in the third stage is 3,113 meters per second. That's 3 meters per second short of the calculated lunar transfer which is 3,116 kilometers, uh, excuse me, 3,116 meters per second. Uh, but, like I said, the payload's Estes engine can produce the rest of the delta V if necessary, and also these calculations do not include the Oberth effect and such things like that. Uh, simulated view of the extension of the solar panels here as we don't seem to have the onboard camera available. Been having connection problems with this fuel depot. And so it continues on to its translunar injection point and we will catch up with it once it reaches that point. Uh, it is expected to do that at uh, one hour and four minutes into the mission. There is expected to be a loss of electric charge on the dark side of Earth. The fuel depot only carries spare electric charge for a duration equivalent to when it would be in the dark around the moon. That loss of electric charge won't hinder anything as it, it is expected to occur well before the transfer time and the, the fuel depot will return to the sunlit side of the planet in time for its translunar injection. So we'll catch up with it once it reaches that point and hope that burn is a success. Here we are with an update on the Paliak Fuel Depot. 
Uh, it was not able to make its lunar transfer on its first orbit due to a lack of uh, communication with the satellite constellation. Remember that the Sputnik 4X satellite constellation has gaps in it. It was a partial success only. And so it is making its transfer on the second orbit around Earth. And this is T plus 2 hours and 23 minutes. Connection is good. The seven RL-10 engines are successfully lit for the long lunar transfer. This is an extremely long burn. As you can see from the onboard camera, the fuel depot is actually on the dark side of Earth, though still with electric charge due to it turning off its own lights to conserve electricity. This is the forward-looking view, so it's heading towards the sunrise. It's worth discussing at this point, one of the fuel depot's supplementary functions is to, to detect ketane on the moon. It has a ketane detector, which means that the fuel depot will have to be placed in orbit below 250 kilometers around the moon in order to do its uh, detection. That was part of the reason why it has the large solar panels. Now with its low battery capacity it will still need to turn off the detector when it's on the dark side of the moon, but otherwise it will be able to function properly and uh, perhaps give us a nice coverage of the moon if it can get into an inclined orbit around the moon. Otherwise it will only be able to detect detect uh, ketane deposits around the equator. The expectation is that it will be in a somewhat inclined orbit, uh, one that uh, will facilitate uh, lunar missions, lunar landings, uh, without uh, being so inclined that uh, ascent vehicles will have trouble docking to it. So that is the current plan and the plan going forward for the EDB is to make use of uh, lunar ketane deposits in order to uh, conduct any sort of lunar mission, carrying the entire fuel load from Earth to the Moon is uh, deemed not uh, financially feasible at this time. The burn is uh, so far going well as we, uh, we are treated to a sunrise. To facilitate refueling needs, the fuel depot actually has four different sizes of docking ports. It's got a Clampatron Senior, a Clampatron Junior, uh, the standard Clampatron docking port, as well as a two meter Clampatron docking port large. All of these were found lying by the side of the road, possibly near the Clampatron factory. We are coming close to the end of the burn here. Obviously, the last few delta V are critical in determining what kind of trajectory it has towards the moon. And uh, we see here, this is a characteristic issue with a smart ASS when it is in node mode and the uh, node is fulfilled. Uh, we expect to restore stability momentarily. The, the fuel depot has a 2 meter reaction wheel as well as RCS ports and so it should be able to get itself under control once the command is accepted. But uh, we're reading now that the burn was went for a little bit too long and so the SS engine on the fuel depot itself will have to make a correction burn. It uh, it overburned a little bit and so we'll expect to see a correction burn coming up. For now uh, the next stage is to separate the payload from the third stage and we're going to see if we can watch that happen.
Mission Control is dropping the solar panels so we get a proper view of that. And there we go, a separation from the third stage. The third stage did manage to conduct uh, transmitter injection successfully. It had the Delta V, it uh, simply overburned. So, so at least the payload to transmitter injection seems to be fulfilled. We've got a good number on that. Now the camera is trying to angle for a good view of Earth as the as the Paliak fuel depot leaves the vicinity of the Earth. And we should get plenty of good views of our home planet thanks to that. There's a simulated view of the fuel depot as it's separated from the third stage currently flying over Australia. We'll come back to you with the correction burn. And here we are again, the Pania Fuel Depot now much farther away from Earth as, as we await the correction burn that will get it into its proper tra trajectory around the moon. Right now it does not have a rendezvous with the moon but we expect that a uh, small burn will be able to correct that. Not entirely sure why the lights are going out here. Possibly simply for the view as uh, the craft is turning around to line up with its uh, burn vector. Yes, I think uh, most of these maneuvers are simply uh, to give us a better view of Earth. We'll come back to you once Jeb has sorted this out and figured it's all right to start the correction burn. I think he's he's probably commanding this from Titan Station and messing around a bit. Okay, now perhaps we will get that expected correction burn. As we do see a quite magnificent view of uh, Earth, the Pacific Ocean, Indonesia, Australia, somewhat upside down from the more familiar orientation. Simulated view of the burn as for some, oh, uh, I suppose the camera was pointed in the wrong direction anyway. And in the simulation you can actually see the third stage flying past as of course uh, the fuel depot slowed down in order to align itself with its uh, rendezvous with the moon. The Paliak fuel depot is now turning around to point prograde and uh, as it makes this maneuver I think it's time to say Thank you for watching, and uh, we will bring you updates about the Fuel Depot's mission. It's expected to reach the moon in approximately seven days, and so we will bring you an update then as it makes its lunar orbit. And with that, uh, once again, thank you for watching, and this is the EDB signing off.